Hello, hello, hello. There we go. How's the sound? We good? Yep. Okay, perfect. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all to this morning's uh, press briefing for the lake fire, the lake incident. Our order of speakers, uh, I'll go ahead and read those off for you. Uh, also at the end, we'll take all questions uh, from, the, from the different agency reps. So if you guys could hold your questions to the end, uh, we'll make sure we try to accommodate you with that. First order speaker, uh, U.S. Forest Service, Fire Chief Robert Garcia. Second up will be Fire Chief Daryl L. Osby from L.A. County Fire. Uh, third up will be uh, Captain Ron Schaefer from L.A. Sheriff's. And then uh, fourth up from CHP, Lieutenant Kathleen Toggenberger. I'm Captain Ron Harrelson, L.A. County Fire, Public Information Officer, and we'll go ahead and get started. Chief Garcia. Good morning. Just uh, provide a quick update on the uh, incident uh, from yesterday afternoon and, and, and over nine hours uh, from last night. So as uh, mentioned yesterday, just after three o'clock, uh, 3.30, the Los Angeles County Fire Department, the Angeles National Forest responded in the mutual threat zone to a fire in what was reported to be Pine Canyon, Lake Hughes. And um, as most of you saw yesterday, and we saw the imagery yesterday, this fire quickly erupted uh, by sundown to over 6,000 acres. And by late last night, uh, last napping, we had it about 10,500 acres uh, as of our last uh, aerial reconnaissance map. As part of that unified command uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, we also entered into unified command with Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department and California Highway Patrol due to the number of road closures and evacuations that they'll speak on today to provide updates on numbers of those. I, I will report that although we're showing 0% containment at this time in 10,500 acres, um, some tremendous work was done last night overnight in the area around uh, Lake Hughes and Pine Canyon where the fire crossed Pine Canyon Road last night and there was a tremendous firefight uh, to protect uh, lives and property in that area. Uh, many of that, uh, many of those acres that were involved, uh, we saw lots of imagery overnight of the structure protection effort by uh, our air resources from both LA County Fire and the Angeles National Forest, as well as hand crews, bulldozers, and numerous strike teams of engines moving through that Pine Canyon, Lake Hughes area to protect structures. At, at this time, uh, we have uh, mobilized a federal incident management team, uh, Type 1 incident management team that will be uh, moving in uh, late this afternoon and early uh, evening to uh, assist us in the management and uh, planning and logistics of the incident going forward. Uh, this will be a major fire for, for several days. The current weather that we started with this morning has helped uh, buy us some time to get some relief crews out there and start developing some, some perimeter control anchor points in uh, numerous points al along this fire. With a 10,000 acre fire, uh, most of which pushed out uh, yesterday afternoon, there's a tremendous uh, amount of effort to regroup, uh, reprioritize and move resources around, including those relief resources that came in last night and this morning. We'll remain in Unified Command of Los Angeles County Fire Department and to, pro to pro provide an update on uh, the things I've mentioned in terms of closures and structure protection. I'd like to turn it over to Fire Chief Darrell Osby. Good Good morning, uh, Darrell Osby, Fire Chief of the Los Angeles County Fire Department. And first, on behalf of our Honorable Supervisor, Catherine Barger, who I've been in contact with throughout the day, yesterday and this evening, last night, and our unified partners, the Angeles National Forest, uh, the Sheriff Department, the CHP, uh, we're here to give you a briefing in relation to the uh, fire, lake fire. As mentioned earlier, the fire began uh, yesterday afternoon um, immediately upon receipt of the call, the Los Angeles County Fire Department uh, responded with the Angeles National Forest, which is part of our agreement. Um, and this fire is in, in the Angeles National Forest, but we do have an agreement with them to respond, our nearest resources to these, this incident. Um, as you can tell, the fire progressed rapidly yesterday, and um, we ordered additional resources. Um, there has been areas of this fire that have not burned in decades. It's an unaccessible terrain, which has added to the complexity of the fire. Um, 
We had firefighters fighting the fire all night, um, primarily with our perimeter control, but in, also in the forest uh, this area, a local government, um, LA County Fire Department, is responsible for uh, structure protection. Um, we had our firefighters and we assist, we were assisted with mutual aid from multiple fire departments, multiple agencies I saw here from LA City to Ventura County, Anaheim, Long Beach, Glendale, Santa Monica, just to mention a few, but several departments throughout the region assisted us last night with structure defense. Um, I was apprised this morning that we did lose several structures. Um, I do not know the number of structures. Um, we will have damage assessment teams out today uh, getting an exact count of structures lost. But I will add that we did have firefighters that were actively fire, fighting fires all night. So although we're gonna report later the accurate number of structures lost, we can say that many structures were saved because of the actions of the firefighters um, last night they were up all night. Um, currently, as mentioned by Chief Garcia uh, from the Angeles National Forest, um, we are in unified command. Um, there will be a major incident management team coming from the forest. We will still remain in unified command. Uh, the Los Angeles County Fire Department has a significant amount of resources here. We have over 45 engines, um, 10 hand crews, six dozers, six water tenders, three helicopters will be here today to also um, help with the containment of the fire. As mentioned earlier, um, the fire did lay down last night. Um, we had significant cloud cover and certain areas maybe, maybe a few light uh, showers, um, but we are concerned because when the cloud cover leaves, um, as you have been aware, there were experiencing a significant heat up. And we're expecting significant temperatures later today, but more so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, moving in to next week. So we will have our crews, our dozers, and our firefighters working all day to try to create more containment to this fire because our objective today is to increase our containment lines. Um, in conclusion, as I mentioned, it's gonna be a hot, dry summer, and it's gonna be a very, very hot, dry weekend. And so we would like to thank the citizens of this fire that evacuated safely and got out and listened to the orders, which will be discussed later as it relates to evacuations. But I would like to remind the other citizens to go onto our website and look at the Ready, Set, Go um, brochure that we have for you that in the event of a fire that you know what to do in advance. Um, and recognize that if you see a fire, that you immediately dial 911. If you live in a fire prone area, be extremely cautious and careful because as mentioned through previous press conferences, Every year, over 90% of fires are human caused. This fire is currently under investigation, but be extremely careful. Um, next, I would like to bring to the podium from the Los Angeles Sheriff Department, Captain Ronald Schaefer. Good morning, I am Captain Ron Schaefer. I'm the captain of Palmdale Sheriff Station. Uh, we're responsible for the mandatory evacuations and currently that is taking place east of Ridge Route Road, west of Lake Hughes Road, north of Pine Canyon Road and Lake Hughes Road, and south of the 138 uh, Highway. We've had two families that have taken advantage of the temporary shelters. And those temporary shelters are located at the Highland High School up in Palmdale. The other one is the Castaic Sports Center here in Castaic. For people that have animals or uh, small animals, they can utilize the LA County Animal Shelters, which are located in Castaic, Lancaster, and Palmdale. For large animals, we're using the AV Fairgrounds is where those uh, can be sheltered while for the duration of this operation. Uh, we are very appreciative of the fact that we have the support from California Highway Patrol and we have a department-wide patrol division response to support our mission here. We're supported by the Emergency Operations Bureau, our Transit Services Bureau, Century Station, East LA, Compton, Lancaster, Santa Clarita, West Hollywood, Malibu, and Palmdale. Uh, we title these uh, unusual occurrences because it, it doesn't fall into our normal respond to calls for service, talk to people. Uh, this is more in the purview of the fire department and working closely with them. I'm very proud of the deputies and their response to this incident as they don't come to these frequently. 
they, they end up traveling throughout the county and we provide support to the fire department. So the deputy's doing a wonderful job. Uh, Sheriff Villanueva is monitoring and he is uh, concerned about how this operation is executed and the welfare and safety of all people. And um, another important point is the fact that many members of the public, they want to provide assistance as well. Uh, especially when you're talking about horses and, and large livestock and they want to come in and help evacuate those animals. Uh, they have care for the animals as much as the human beings and stuff. We have to prohibit those outside resources coming in because the roadway does not support that kind of activity while the fire department is trying to traverse through the same area. I know it, it causes a lot of heartache. There is care for the animals, but unfortunately, preservation of life and property is a, a priority during this time. So hopefully we get some stability and then we can address those concerns. Thank you very much. Uh, one note before our last speaker comes up. Um, we do have public information officers with microphones uh, in the audience there. Please be patient, address your questions uh, to the agency leads and we'll try to make sure we get to everybody and answer all your questions. So be patient and stand by. At this time, Lieutenant Kathleen Toggenberger. Good morning. The California High Patrol currently is staffing the following closures. San Francisco Canyon Road at Stater Lane, Lake Hughes Road at Ridge Route, Old Ridge Route at SR 138, Three Points Road at SR 138, San Francisco Canyon Road at Spunky Canyon Road, and the 17,000 block of Northbound Elizabeth Lake Road in front of the fire station. We are still assisting with any evacuations, and we would ask that all residents abide by the officer's orders at the closures. Please don't wait until the last minute to meet your residents and know your alternate routes out. the sheriffs or CHP connectors, is there a residents able to come and go as they bring stuff out from their homes, evacuation? Is there an ID check uh, and outside people are not allowed to come in? Is there, tell us what the procedure is for residents to know when they come and go. It, it is residents only. You have to have ID to indicate that you do live there and no outside people. Again, that's the problem with uh, people bringing trucks and trailers trying to get large livestock. Uh, we can't have that. It's, it's going to clog the roadway. They're not familiar with the territory. If they try to turn around, they could literally block the road and, and prevent ingress and ingress. Can the residents be assured that the uh, law enforcement is watching their homes if there are no looting going on? Yeah, absolutely. That's our role. And we stay in the area. Once we mandate an evacuation, we stay in the area to monitor, make sure nobody's going in there. The area is remote. People that choose to live in this area, they, they know the, the hazards that come with it. Uh, but it's also, you're there for business. You're there because you live there, and uh, that's what we're controlling. I've got a question for Chief Austin. Thank you. Yeah, I got a big mouth. You know, you have to get that close to me. Uh, Chief Osby? Uh, sir, you said you were surprised that uh, with the number of structures that were lost, so what, what was that surprised you about it? Were you not aware? Uh, given the size of this fire and given the statement just made that you could have pockets of homes in these areas? Um, if I use the word surprise, then I, I misspoke. Okay. Okay, so um, what, I, what I was saying is that we did have structures threatened last night. We know that we lost several structures last night. We don't know the exact um, count. We have our damage assessment teams going out today to make a kind of as far as uh, structures, whether it be residential or outbuildings. Um, I can say that we, there are numerous structures that were saved by our firefighters last night because of their efforts um, 
we are aware this is a very remote area, so like this mission area, we have areas that are, are ranched out homes that we have interest, interest protecting those, but then primarily the largest uh, firefight that I'm aware of last night was primarily around Pine Canyon, where I believe some of the structures were lost. Um, it wasn't a surprise. I mean, these things happen each and every year, and our firefighters um, take a lot of pride in putting their lives on the line to protect every single structure. So they're saddened by the loss of any structure, but um, we'll be able to do an assessment today to make an accurate number to see how many of the structures were lost. And to follow up, are you concerned about any specific other area or which way this fire is going? What are the, where are the homes most at threat? So people know in advance, given you want them to be out of there by the time you get in. Well, nat naturally anywhere in the perimeter of the fire, and this is a very remote area, so there's ranch homes throughout the uh, area, but primarily um, around Hughes Lake and um, Pine Canyon, that's where the largest density is. Uh, we're trying to make sure that we have a lot of uh, perimeter control today with our bulldozers and our hand crews and our firefighters out there trying to keep that containment. Like I mentioned earlier, um, we have a low on the fire because of the cloud cover, um, but we're concerned that once this cloud cover goes away, they're gonna see a lot of active fire activity, especially um, uh, tomorrow into the weekend. So we're gonna do all that we can today to try to do the best we can to contain this fire. And uh, was it who is it from the Sheriff's Department? Uh, do we have a number on the homes that were eva uh, forced to evacuate or the people? Do we have a number on those? We know that 100 homes were evacuated, but we don't know how many people uh, took advantage of leaving. We had two that actually took advantage of the shelter. Um, I'm not sure if those are people who actually lost their homes or if they were in the evacuation area and they chose to use the temporary shelter. Chief Garcia. Good morning, uh, Steve Gregory Camp. Uh, I'm wondering, you say the type one is the management team's coming in this afternoon. Can you talk about how that's going to play a role in how you fight this fire? And what's the most important Yeah, so uh, the uh, uh, federal incident management team brings some significant logistical and planning support as well as base camp. We, we have over a thousand firefighters now either assigned or en route to this incident. And so being able to support those firefighters to, to resupply them daily with equipment, uh, fire hose and tools, as well as uh, uh, cycle uh, rest for day shift, night shift type personnel, and to assist us in uh, things like mapping and GIS and, and, and the planning of this operation uh, becomes really significant. And many of the uh, uh, fire chiefs and leadership that are currently assigned today and last night and going into tomorrow, um, they as well will need some relief. And so that's what that incident management team will provide is support in all the functional areas from planning to operation planning and from logistical and, and, and uh, base camp uh, type of operation. Can you show us on the map sort of how the fire is progressing and where your concern areas are since it's that close to you? Sure, and I'll, I'll reference the map as you kind of see the shape of the map kind of, uh, kind of uh, displays how this fire moved yesterday. This area at the top end of the map that's described as Pine, uh, this is uh, Pine Canyon Road, and you can see where it crossed Pine Canyon Road, and that's where uh, many of the structures uh, that Chief Osby uh, referenced, where a lot of active firefighting was going on with uh, engines and crews and dozers there last night, and backed up and supported by uh, nighttime aerial aircraft. This area here on the west side and the southwest side, uh, described as Division F, is uh, that area that is very remote, very few roads in that area, very uh, uh, heavy vegetation in that area, and, and, and that's an area of key focus in what we call perimeter control. And this is where, this is where it's going to take uh, hand crews out on the ground, uh, bulldozers, and backed up by aircraft to try to hold this section to uh, prevent and keep this fire from coming back around and pushing again out in the same pattern that we saw yesterday. What is your most uh, vulnerable spot up there that's uh, heavy in fire? Uh, what's, what's, what's the pressure point here on this the hot spot here? So as, as described uh, in, in terms of our containment, which will, which will be updated continuously, we have, we have open fire line or uncontained fire line uh, around this whole perimeter at this time. We do have areas um, back in uh, what's described on this map is 
Division Alpha and Division Zulu that we've got some anchor points established. Uh, a lot of good work last night uh, with hand crews and bulldozers to get some what we call anchor points established for perimeter control. But most of this fire has potential to line up with topography and line up with the wind and make another significant run wherever it's going to find the fuel and wherever it's going to line up with that topography. Can you, uh, can you point out then, Chief, where, the, where you believe the origin of the fire began? You know, it's really hard to say um, within this map. We do have a fire investigation team assigned. But as I mentioned yesterday in the briefing, this fire uh, was already over 50 acres when our first arriving units arrived on the in on scene from both LA County Fire Department and the Angeles National Forest. And those first arriving units came out of the north. And, and as they approached this fire coming down Lake Hughes Road, that fire was moving up towards the Lake Hughes Road. So their ability to immediately establish perimeter control or anchor point was compromised. And so in the early stages of determining the pinpoint origin, that's gonna take some work and our investigators worked through the night last night um, to start narrowing in on, on that point of origin of where the fire originally started. Thank you, sir. Chief Osby, uh, can you tell us, tell us about the firefighters uh, where are they coming from? Where are you bringing them on from uh, from California, other states? Uh, tell us uh, what kind of shift they're working in. Just tell us a little about the fire parties. Okay, so as mentioned, um, the fire began yesterday around 3.30. And so the original uh, responding fire departments were the Angeles National Forest, which is in their jurisdiction, and in the county of Los Angeles, in our jurisdiction. So we have, uh, which we call a mutual aid, mutual threat zone. So we both responded. Um, we both uh, requested additional resources from our respective departments. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, we have 45 inches here, and I know that the National Forest has a significant amount of resources with, 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 from their department. As this fire grew, um, we have what we call a single ordering point, so it went to the forest. So the forest will be responsible for requesting additional resources from the, the federal, state, and local government. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the, as it relates to local government, um, local government is responsible uh, for the, the structure protection in this forest. And so from my department, LA City, Ventura County, Orange County, fire departments throughout the, uh, this region, uh, if you see the larger fire trucks, those are there, they help us with their structure protection. Once that structure threat is minimized, then you'll see the smaller type three or type six engines or even some engines from our department with bulldozers, hand crews, and aircraft for the next several days, if not weeks, working on the hot spots and the perimeter to try to, to contain this fire. Uh, we'll put out a notice uh, as far as the next, <clears throat> excuse me, the next briefing. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and uh, uh, conclude the uh, briefing for now. Um, I want to thank all of the agencies involved, uh, all of the agency heads and leads that were here available to you guys. So we'll put a notice out and let you guys know what the next briefing is. Thank okay, we'll also you. have our information officers here available to you guys for any, any additional updates or anything you may need. Thank you.
What's that? That's doing everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, do me a favor. Let's start with say and spell your name for the title. Jerome Theory. J-E-R-O-M-E-T-H-I-E-R-R-Y. Disaster Volunteer. And so, how long have you been out here? Uh, so, 6 a.m. Okay, you won't hear my voice in the thing, so if you could kind of put the question in the, like, I've been out here since 6 a.m.? Well, I've been here since 6 a.m. Um, Red Cross has been here since the evacuation orders were issued by the Los Angeles County Fire Department. We were asked to come out and open up an evacuation center, and um, we're here to provide information and emergency shelter as needed. So how many people have shown up? So far, we have not had any clients show up here at this facility. Uh, I don't know about the other facility. Okay, and so wh exactly what does the Red Cross do? Can you kind of explain that a little more detail? The American Red Cross sets up an e emergency evacuation center with us in COVID. Um, under COVID circumstances, we're now doing what we call non-congregate uh, shelters, meaning um, as of right now, if needed, we might may provide uh, a hotel uh, as needed, uh, free of charge to the client. And so do you provide other things like food and water and that kind of thing as well? We do provide snacks and, and meals. Uh, if they need to go to the, if they actually need sheltering, then we provide meals at the hotel. And how, how long of a day are you out here? When do you get here? When do you leave? We're here until it's determined that it's no longer needed. Otherwise, uh, at the direction of LA County, at the direction of LA County Fire, um, we may downsize to a virtual facility um, if, if we're not physically needed here uh, because of low population or low demand. And what hours of the day are you here? We haven't determined that as of yet. As of right now, we're here for as long as we're needed. Okay. Thank you very much. So I saw what was going on and I just said to him, if I go down there, are you going to arrest me? He said, no, 